Listen to this. March 14th, 2014. 2015, T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live. Just listen, pay attention, this is live. Well, I rewinded it a little bit. Let me um allowing the gloves to be taken start. off as he waits you know for the and now okay, here we go. strides toward our side of the ring. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Bell Center in Montreal, we go to the judges' scorecards. Sylvain LeBlanc scores at 116 to 112. Alexander Levin scores it. 115 to 113. And Pasquale Procopio has it. 116 to 112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, Vyacheslav Dazar Lasko. Um, um, Steve, you know, Steve Cunningham won the fight. Um, you listen to the punch stat numbers, you can go back and rewind the video. Steve Cunningham, uh, cleaner, effective punching. If I'm correct, Steve Cunningham, I forgot, even though they just played it. If I'm correct, Steve Cunningham, uh, landed more punches, threw more punches, more busy or more active. Um, even though I can say that, uh, Glaskov shots, um, look as if they did more damage. Now, if you look at both fighters' faces, Steve Cunningham is dark, so you won't be able to see the bruises too much. He does have some lumping under his eyes, as I'm looking at right now. But as far as uh, Glasgow, um on his left eye, you know, he's got a little mouse under his left eye. But work rate, ring generalship, and um, punch accuracy, you know, or, well, okay, activity, I'm going to give that to Steve Cunningham. Um, effective punching as far as... Who's punching? Who, whose punches would you hear more? You, you you were hearing Glasgow's punches. He had the harder punches, but now if you look at the fact that well, when it comes to uh, Glasgow, this is now three questionable fights on his record. The Steve Cunningham, um, um, this this has a good chance to go into a rematch because uh, uh, Kathy Duve and main events they're good at making rematches, even though the fight wasn't exciting still. You know, maybe they'll be able to work something out. I don't know. You know, maybe on, you know, an ESPN or whatever. If that's still around, I don't know. Um, and I, I know all about the Al Heyman thing. Um, Glaskov, when he fought Malik Scott, had a similar situation where he started coming on late. But in my opinion, Malik Scott won the fight. Now, just because I'm from Philly, go back and watch the tapes. And... Watching this, I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, all right, there's not no controversy. I, I, like the promoters, there's no controversy with the promoters. So now I'm looking at what the judges was probably seeing. And I can understand, you know, uh, being at ringside, right? I can understand how maybe they were looking at the fact that uh, Steve Cunningham was hurt. You know, not significantly, but you can tell he was hurt a few times, maybe several times in the fight. But nothing to the point where you thought he was going to go down. It was usually when he didn't, um, when 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 he was losing control of uh, of uh, the ring, the ring generalship, and basically he started fighting Glasgow fight and fights, and as far as um, getting into exchanges and um, and uh, putting his back against the ropes. But outside of that, it, it's it's a tough situation because I'm thinking to myself, well, I can see how the judges may have had Glaskov winning. But then I'm thinking, well, what about the numbers? And and that's why I think when it comes to judging, it needs to be overhauled a little bit. Like for example, they need to um have um 
have um, monitors. I understand being right there, but still there's certain angles that you don't get to see. Um, and looking at the punch numbers, it's like, you know, he landed, I believe they said 36 more punches. He threw 200 more. It's just stuff like that where I think, well, how did he lose the fight? You know, and then lose the fight on all three judges scorecards. So in my mind, the way I cover boxing, after that, when I see he lost on all three uh, judges scorecards, I go think to myself, okay, well, let me go look at the... Uh, Look at see if there's any politics or any controversy involved. And Steve Cunningham will be 39 years old in July. And yes, we already know he is a star, you know, with his daughter. Just for him to get, you know, on HBO and get robbed like that, in my opinion, is just whack. But I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live with our Real Combat Media.com. I'm so far away from the camera. I cover every single major fight live. Steve Cunningham now improves to, what is he, uh, 29 and 7. He's been stopped once with 13 KOs. Um, former cruiserweight champion. He has a, actually a very, very good resume. And now with Glaskov, you know, for one example, right? Glaskov has the win, unless the IBF orders, and which the IBF should. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Mm. Um, the IBF has been good at making men. It woke me up. The IBF has been choking to death. The IBF has uh, been good at making mandatories and uh, making rematches. And right now, that's clearly a situation where you should make a rematch. And anyway, with the um, with the schedule that Vladimir Klitschko and or Brian Jennings has lined up. Uh, looks like the winner of this fight, who is the IBF mandatory right now, it's a glass. Azor Glaskov is not going to be getting Klitschko anytime soon, or the winner of Brian Jennings versus Klitschko anytime soon. Well, or at least until probably not until maybe I'm going to say early 2015, if not very late this year. So, for example, um, Vladimir Klitschko, if he defeats Brian Jennings, he has to fight Tyson Fury next, and then he wants to want Deontay Wilder. You know, so then you got, well, what if Brian Jennings um, wins? You know, he still got to fight. Um, he'll he'll be fighting for all the belts, so he'll have to fight Tyson Fury and then probably go after Deontay Wilder. So when it comes after, so when it comes to the WBA and the IBF mandatories, they won't be getting them until some, sometime next year. But the main event is starting. One year younger than John Pascal. Functionally, both of these fighters... I am T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.